Welcome back, everyone, to theCUBE's live coverage here at Supercomputing 2024, SC24 in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE with Dave Vellante, also the co-host with me on the Cube Pod every Friday. Check it out, it's our long form podcast. We got NVIDIA and Dell here in the house talking AI and AI factory. We got Adam, great to see you, Senior Director, AI Portfolio Marketing at Dell, and Jason, Director of Product Marketing, Enterprise Platforms with NVIDIA. Welcome back, both CUBE alumni. Thanks for coming back, good to see you. Oh, you guys, pleasure to be back. Good to be here. So two of the biggest names in, in AI right now in supercomputing is really changing the game at the infrastructure layer. We're seeing massive progress. Product, software, and the show floor, and then Giresh is the Dell, some great machines uh, on, on okay. the booth. We did, just did a review there. NVIDIA is in the center of all the action. Congratulations on the continued success, Jason and the team. Um, but it's the game's just getting started, right? So I want to get your perspective on the AI factory, because that's a North Star, but there's now proof is hitting the table. We're starting to see some progress. An AI factory is going to change the game on the data center to connect to the cloud, connect to the edge. I mean, software's driving it, and people are building their own systems. I mean, this is what we're hearing. Jensen said that on his last speech. Okay, you got to own the machine. Yeah. Adam, yeah. I mean, tell you guys have the machine, ma we, machine, and now machines. We we literally, you know, we built the Dell AI factory with Nvidia, and the whole idea is that you've got something that is massively scalable. That people can start out with whatever their early workloads are. They can start small and literally just stack that up. Not only just within a rack, but create rack scale deployments. And so we make it super simple to be able to take the hardware. We worked a lot with our friends at Nvidia. There's a lot of work that's gone together to integrate these two pieces. So it's not just the hardware pieces and the machines they go together, but it's also the networking and the software stack, tested, integrated, yeah. optimized, to be able to deploy that and deploy it fast and at scale to deliver solutions that our customers are looking for. Jason, talk about the NVIDIA role in the partnership because you guys obviously have such a great success with software <laughs> and now with the hardware, or system I shouldn't say, it's not hard, it's, I guess it's hardware, but it's big, yeah. big hardware, uh, really changing the paradigm too in the data center. It's a, it's a machine and the software goes with it. Now you got partners. What's the role in the AI factory from your perspective with Dell? Yeah, no, this is a completely new paradigm. We're seeing companies reinventing their AI infrastructure with you know, concepts like the AI factory. We're thrilled to be partnered with Dell in, in bringing the Dell AI factory with NVIDIA to the market. We introduced it and announced it back in March at GTC together, and we've continued to innovate ever since then with new capabilities. But, it, but ultimately, the, the goal is really to bring AI factories to the enterprise, taking what we've done together at large scale, that you've heard about the, the XAI up and running 19 days with 100,000 H200 GPUs. You heard about the work we've been doing with CoreWeave, with Israel One Supercomputer. We've been doing this at scale for quite some time with Dell and other partners, but, but now we're bringing this to the enterprise. So as Adam said, we, we've packaged this up in a simplified solution that can help companies get up and running very quickly, leveraging all the best practice yeah. and learnings that we've done at large scale, bringing that to the enterprise. So helping them wherever they are on their journey, whether they're just getting started with generative AI or whether they're looking to go from proof of concept to proof of value and yeah. scale from maybe a few dozen users, maybe a handful of use cases to hundreds of use cases and thousands of users across their enterprise. I wrote a post at the beginning of this event called, and welcome to the era of clustered systems. <laughs> I mean, servers, we saw that movie, Rack and Stack, Dell, you guys did good on that, sir, wave. <laughs> But now, now there are servers, plural, multiple servers, racks, and systems together. Dave wrote a post two weeks ago on his breaking analysis, kind of a salacious headline to get attention, but he, it was, was a very relevant, I loved it. Jamie Dimon is the new competitor to Sam Altman. And what he was getting at in the post, which was kind of an attention grip, but the meat of the post was, enterprises are going to have their own open AI. <laughs> I mean, JP yeah. Morgan Chase has, for example, has added petabytes. 150 petabytes. Uh, so so what, are they, what are they going to do? Yeah. Guess what they're going to do? They're going to use an AI factory. Sure. They're going to need an AI factory. And that's what we see people doing, is really looking at, they have these tremendous data sets that are valuable to their organization, and they're training their own AIs. Some of them are going and building their own foundational models. Other ones are using those foundational models and augmenting them in order to create area specific data to really help with everything from healthcare, they're doing to customer service, to digital sales, it just, the use cases are tremendous and we keep, keep seeing customers come in with really new and interesting things, both from public sector yeah. as well as private sector. That's how, how are customers keeping up with the velocity that you guys are driving here? Every time Jensen talks, keynote or a podcast, I learn something new. I, that's what I really like about the way he uh, presents is because there's always a new little tidbit in there. And one of the things I heard recently was, 
you know, in the old days, 286, 386, 486, Pentium, et cetera, Excel would run faster. But now, he, he mentioned the, a, the AI infrastructure is accelerating, yeah. but also the software, it's not the same software, it's not static anymore, it's not just running faster, it's yeah. you're able to do new things. Agentic, is, last year was co-pilots, mm -hmm. now it's yeah. agents, yeah. swarm yeah. of agents. How are customers keeping up? So, there's a number of pieces that go into that. First and foremost, NVIDIA's been creating some incredible software and the pace of innovation of the software they're building is, is truly impressive with the NIMS and the blueprints. Mm. And then we've been co-engineering with them. There's been over 350,000 hours of engineering work going to make sure that those things are optimized and work really well on the hardware so that our customers can go down and they can simply work on the things they want to work on versus focusing on how do they keep up on all these pieces. They don't have to. It's made super easy because there are these blueprints. Hey, I want to do something where I want a customer service spot. Mm. Great, there is a blueprint for that. You deploy that with the NIM. We have a way to just put that right on the machine and you can actually start from that spot rather than starting from what are the machines I need, what are the accelerators, hey, what's my technical software stack going to be, how do I optimize it? Like making that as easy as possible and then layering onto that, we have a whole services division and they work and they help build these things as we come up with their, our TRDs, our designs for these things. And so they're able to go out and work with customers and share that knowledge with them, help them come along and say, hey, here's how we get you to be able to go faster with these things. Because what we see is speed is incredibly important. And the companies that are starting on this early and getting in, if, if you don't do it, you're getting left behind because competitors, you just see it so moving so rapidly. And so we're working with them, with the software that's integrated, with the hardware and the services yeah. to help make sure that people can stay up to date on that. It's interesting, you know, it's almost like, I don't want to use the word onboarding the enterprise, but if you look at the evolution of, say, on the consumer side, the training and the inference, they're, they're well ahead, but then the Llama models are getting better price performance, as to the point about the Jamie Dimon versus Sam Altman, the intellectual property and the data Mm -hmm. Okay, it's huge. So no one's going to just let those jewels leave the building, so to speak, uh, or the on-premise, but you want to connect to the cloud. So you're seeing the system. So I have to ask, mm -hmm. the software question, every new architecture in this wave presents new software. Transformers leveled up the old algorithms from the 80s when I went to school. Everyone knew AI, but no one really could do anything with it, right? But Transformers changed the game. And then architectures changed, and then the software came out. Now new architectures. This is the, the kind of that Intel wave that Dave talks about. This is where you're at. So you're bringing the factory. Now, are you onboarding them? Kind of, I mean, in fact, you start with a factory. Oh, absolutely, the we whole get company. in there with them and we help them with it because some people know what they need. They just need the, they just need the hardware. But a lot of the enterprises, hey, they're asking, help us, help us pick the right use cases, help us look at what we can, what are the best things for us to go do first that will deliver the most value for our organization? And we're there to do that because we understand the software, the hardware, how it's integrated, and we can make that happen. What have you guys learned? Um, Jason, because the NVIDIA has a lot of expertise. And the other thing, um, I'll quote Jensen's, well, look at Jensen's speech, is he says things like, we have experience at scale. Dell, you have experience at scale with customers on your side. How do you take that scale and bring it to the factory? Because I'm just putting my use cases in now, I got the low hanging fruit. Right. And it's not just GPUs, they're key. It's networking's got to work too. All these things in the factory got to work. Take us through the progression of, how this unfolds mm -hmm. with that context of what you've learned and what are customers actually doing? Is it RAG? Is that the first use case? Is it consolidating stacks? Take us through the, the progression. No, I mean, you're absolutely right. I mean, we, we've learned to do this at scale with many of our largest customers and we've, we've built out reference architectures, cloud provider reference architectures that we've published and made available to our partners and our customers. We've done the same thing now for enterprises with the Dell AI Factor, with NVIDIA and other partners, we have new enterprise reference architectures that actually you know, are based on those cloud provider reference architectures, but done at a different scale. So that organizations that are just getting started with their initial use cases that are building out clusters that are enterprise skills fitting in their existing enterprise um, rack scale architecture, you know, for whether it's with, with an initial use case for, uh, for something like a digital assistant or whether they're building out um, a larger deployment using you know, a RAG for a Argentic RAG, we can meet them where they are, leverage those reference architectures that include all of the compute with you know, our, our GPUs, with our Grace CPUs, with networking, with Spectrum X networking, with the software that we, we've talked about with NVIDIA Enterprise, the NIM inference microservices, the new Agentic you know, capabilities we have now with the, the AI blueprints, together with all the capabilities that Dell brings with Dell PowerEdge servers, Dell PowerSkill storage, 
the, the, the services we talked about, even in the workstations, you know, with precision workstation, all that packaged together to be able to say, hey, here is a reference architecture yeah. and, and a Dell reference design that customers can then take and deploy and get up and running with those use cases as quickly as possible. And in fact, you know, we're seeing you know, dramatic time savings and you know, faster time to market leveraging our reference architectures and the Dell reference designs that get those customers up and running quickly, get them from you know, proof of concept to you know, having actual you know, production use cases where they're delivering value. What are some of the product development innovations that you guys are doing? Because this is, again, it, it, there, it's, it's a starting point, but it's already built into the company. So it's, it's got a lot of stuff in there. GPUs, all these clustered systems, and here, and, but networking's got to work too. So what, all this is happening. Where's the innovation? If you had to describe product innovation on the Dell and NVIDIA side with the AI factory, what is the key product innovation? of the AI factory. Oh boy, uh, how much time you got? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll I mean, list a couple cooling of jumps out at me. I mean, liquid cooling is a big thing as you think about the liquid yeah. that's going on. Also just the density, if you think about, you know, the new processors and the new accelerators that are coming out and how we can get more and more dense racks. Also, how do you ship those pieces at scale? So it's not just you're buying pieces, parts, but you're actually buying whole systems. You're buying an integrated rack that has all these pieces built in and that takes in the advantages of what we built with the systems, what the networking is, and their specialty networking between the accelerators, as well as the networking between the machines. And so, have we built systems and racks that can integrate those things and make doing that quick and easy for people to do? And that's just on the hardware side. And then you move over to the software side and say, it's not just, hey, we've got software and it runs, you know, x86 infrastructures and, you know, CUDA and accelerators, but has it been optimized for those systems? And so, do, you can get away from doing all the, how do we tune this, and how do we fit it together, <laughs> but how do we actually make sure this is ready to go? So when you have it, you set it up, and you start running it. Yeah, and not only that, you get the best possible performance too, because I mean, obviously speed, you know, time to first token is really important for a lot, all our enterprise <laughs> customers, but so is performance, and so is you know, efficiency, and so is total cost of ownership. So we're working together to make sure, you know, leveraging the reference architectures, the refer reference designs we've built together, make sure we have the, the optimal performance for those customers, so that again, they're getting the best value for I mean, you're for provisioning the infrastructure with the factory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, if you look at IT, they've over the years, they bought a lot of servers, a lot of gear, racks, and we could boil that together. Now, here's the new thing. and But now the workloads, are different. So what are those characteristics? I mean, we talk about end-to-end -end workloads. What workloads are running on the factory? What are you guys are seeing starting today and how do you see a steady state workload? Sure, so to your point, the deployment and setup pieces of it, you know, we built automation integration that can speed up that, you know, deployment of that software and getting it up and running by like 86% a reduction in that time. So I mean, a real difference in how long it takes to really get it out there and getting it done quickly. And when you look at those workloads that you're asking about, you know, we see people doing a range of things. So certainly RAG and using RAG as part of chatbots is a common one that we see people starting with, especially in things like support or even internal systems like HR. We're also seeing things like vision systems where people are, you know, using them in medical situations. Northwest Medicine is using it to analyze radiological x-rays, look at the x-ray and then provide first feedback on that. Then it uses an LLM and RAG to be able to write up the report for the doctor. So the doctor spends more time doing what doctors do best, which is not typing on keyboards and writing reports. So that'd be two good examples yeah. I could think of. Yeah, I mean, I so those are all great use cases. I mean, you mentioned one of the, the, the examples was the digital assistant. And I think we, yeah. there's a, a great customer story that you know, um, we can showcase is the, the city of Amarillo, which is a, one, a real compelling story where this is, this is a city that has like 62 different languages in, in, in dialects in, in the small city of, with like maybe 20, less than 24% of the population that, that doesn't speak English as first language. So they have you know very diverse population and they just wanted a way to get very easily you know, interact with their you know, government information services. And this is now they're creating a digital assistant that can you know, speak to and interact with those citizens in their own dialect and language and answer you know, simple questions like, you know, whether it's about the you know uh, the you know city uh, you know, services yeah. or community planning or you know educational services and get that you know instantaneously in their own language and that and that's you know just one example that we've seen with the yeah. Dalai factory with NVIDIA with a digital assistant but we're seeing lots of other examples like Adam talked about you know guys what's so fascinating to me about this whole AI conversation is you know we follow very closely companies like Dell and Nvidia and the mag 7 and and you know, trillion dollar valuations, Dell's valuations you know, tripled or quadrupled in the, in the last year, awesome. 
But the, but the amazing value that's going to be created is your customers. Oh, yes. And so I think about, well, how, the, if everybody's going to have an AI factory, which I buy into, accelerated computing, we're going to see a massive transformation of infrastructure. It's going to democratize AI. You're going to have organizations driving AI from top down, command and control. You're going to have individuals wow, exactly. le leveraging AI, AI PCs, there's AI everywhere. You think about how is that going to change the structure of industries, not just the, the technology business, but all your customers' industries, financial services and healthcare and all these others. And it's interesting, you were mentioning, you know, the 150 petabytes that JPMC has. So they've got this proprietary advantage. On the other hand, they have a lot of baggage too. So you're going to have AI, <laughs> AI native companies that are doing new, the same work with one tenth of the people, right. driving agents, and you're going to see this, I think, really interesting collision of new structure industries, battling existing industries with tons of proprietary data. You guys both have moats, so you're like, great, let's see what happens, right? And <laughs> all built upon your infrastructure. When you think about the future, how do you think it will play out? Not that it's, I'm not asking for a crystal ball, but when you talk to customers, you must be seeing both. You're seeing the big five LLM vendors doing things that were impossible before. You see existing customers maybe taking smaller bites. What's that landscape look like? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'd say today what we're seeing is that, you know, companies that are investing in generative AI are beginning to see tremendous advantage. And I think the, the, the difference that you'll see is the existing companies that are leveraging generative AI, deploying those use cases, you know, are, are going to be the ones that, that win in, the, in their industry. There will be new entrants that also disrupt those industries, right. um, and they may take share, but, but it, the companies that don't get started today with generative AI, they're going to be left behind. And I think that's really the message I think that, you know, Jensen and, and NVIDIA have, have tried to share with the broader market is that generative AI is disrupting every industry. It is, it is revolutionizing every industry. And so every company needs to get start, started today, and they need to move quickly to leverage this technology to drive efficiency, to drive business innovation. And the companies that, that harness that innovation are the ones that you're going to be able to succeed, whether they're existing players in that, that, uh, that particular industry or market, or whether they're new entrants. It tells an interesting example, the stuff that you guys are doing internally. Oh yeah. It's, not, <laughs> it, it's amazing, actually. We were, John and I, well actually you weren't there, but we were out there a couple weeks ago, got a little deep dive on some of the internal things that you're doing. You know, this $100 billion company mm -hmm. doing really driving AI because you don't want to get caught blindsided by some the, the AI transformation that we're saying is really a Cambrian explosion. You talk about, you know, yeah. the, the, the people who are on the forefront or not, it's really, you need to avoid being left behind because what you can do with AI is just amazing. If I just look at like what my team is able to accomplish just with the people that we have, and we've looked at it as like, oh my God, now like the goals for the team yeah. just continue to grow because what one person can get done is so amazing. Yeah. And we're just seeing that not only internally, what we're seeing in terms of our own AI usage, the own models that we have, all the, you know, we've got something like 200 different projects that, that we're using internally. You know, my team is working on like five or six of them. I mean, they're just, it's everywhere. It's spread throughout the company, but we've seen the companies on the forefront that dive in to that, what a transformational effect it can have on the organization. And I think you're just going to see that multiply, that as more and more organizations realize how much this can benefit them, can benefit their customers, can benefit their constituents, can benefit their employees. You're going to see greater and greater adoption and the organizations that get in sooner, they're going to get the greatest advantage out of that because everything has a learning curve. And as much as we try and integrate it, make it fast for people, everyone goes through that curve. We try and flatten that curve for folks, but ultimately you got to get on the curve in order to start to get that benefit. And those are the learnings we're bringing together with the Dell AI factory with NVIDIA is bringing that out to enterprise customers to help them get up and running and get started quickly to be able to, to, to innovate faster, to compete in their markets, to drive you know, business value, to help, help improve their customer experience, to create new revenue opportunities. And we're seeing that across the board with all of our enterprise customers. Their yeah, enthusiasm is awesome. And, and the confidence is showing now at the show here. Uh, I love that comment, Dave, about industries, because you know, we've been, on our last pod, we said productivity will change the economics. You talk about industry impact, the economics are going to shift mm -hmm. because productivity is changing. Productivity is going to go through the roof. Everyone, everyone I know that starts using these tools just sees it. We see it from internal data, what I see from my own teams, what I see from other teams, and we see it from our customers. Yeah. The ones that go in and implement these things, they just talk about like, you know, what Samsung SDS 
does and how much faster they're able to do what they need to do because their meeting transcriptions yeah. are all done with AI and the email summarization that they do. Yeah. And so someone's not sitting there typing that out because unless you're a stenographer, like your job isn't to type on a keyboard. The yeah. keyboard is just an interface for you to work at what the real value is, which are your ideas and what yeah. you deliver for a customer. You know, we haven't had a killer app. We haven't had a decade long productivity boom since the PC era not in the 90s. And before that, it was the 60s with the consumer boom. And so the AI promises that yeah. we're going to have a decade of, of, of above average productivity growth. I, I Personally, I think it's coming. I mean, well, we the, all, other, the other theme too we've been hearing is that it like, feels like the 90s, but during that wave of open systems kicked in, you saw categories emerge, new categories. Mm -hmm. Net, networking, I mean, open networking, so hello Cisco, hello TCP IP. Again, software change, internet comes on, boom. Here we're seeing the same thing. Um, we're now three months into our New York Stock Exchange studio. Our first of two sets is running. So I've been doing a lot of startup interviews down there. And the common theme is, I can't get enough GPUs. So NVIDIA, keep <laughs> clear thing. Number two is the startups, the entrepreneurial activity is booming because they're seeing these new opportunities. And surprisingly enough, maybe it's just New York, but there are all these young guns in their 20s. They're not doing consumer, they're doing enterprise. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the enterprise has gone mainstream, it's the whole company and it's complicated. The data is professional, so all the top talent is solving enterprise. You look at the startup ecosystem, it's mostly enterprise. So entrepreneurship is booming. Oh, and yeah, and you yeah. see it, and AI shows up in all of that one. Like, I mean, I just look at the startup communities that I engage with, and they're just, you know, AI shows up in everything because people realize the value that it delivers. You can do yeah, so value. much more. Bingo. That's, Again, that, what is, let's get to the value because it, that, you had to hit a nail on the head because that's where the value is. Because we're past the ZERP era, those interest rates now, like show me the money. It would be profitable, but have a product that works. I think that's the value. But in the enterprise, the value is business. So the ecosystem becomes huge. Now, Dell, you guys know what the ecosystem is. NVIDIA, you're now expanding out your partnerships. A connected ecosystem is not just APIs anymore, it's data. Right. So how is the ecosystem impacted by the AI factory? Because I mean, the AI factory has to work, but has to be open to all, potentially. How do you guys view the ecosystem conversation, the relationship, how they how they work now? Is it more engineering oriented? Is it more business? I mean, has it changed? Can you share your ecosystem thoughts? So if I think about our partnership, it's, I mean, certainly there's a business relationship there, but it's much more than that. I talked about how many engineering hours, over 350,000 hours that we spent. Like, it's more than just, hey, we've decided to do business together because we look at how do we solve customer problems? And it's going in and saying, not just, you know, we want to sell you some servers or storage or networking or accelerator or this, but how do we put that all together? Yeah. And how do we solve a problem that you have? And so when you think about the ecosystem, there are a lot of different pieces that come together. When we saw a solution and we go and we integrate it, we run it for a customer, Sure, there's accelerators in there, there's PCs, there's storage, but there's also lots of other pieces. There's the software stack that sits on top of that. There's applications that sit in that. Those integrate with other systems. And it's that whole piece that gets brought together. Customers benefit because yeah. what they want is they want to solve their problem. And we help them solve the problem. It moves everything faster and it creates a bigger ecosystem. One of the biggest strengths I think we have yeah. is that the ecosystem we bring together, all the different companies that we have very unique partnerships with, that we bring that value to the customer when they help buy a solution like the Dell AI factory with NVIDIA. And there are, I mean, there's a, a broad ecosystem of yeah. you know, software companies, you know, uh, companies that are building you know, uh, agentic AI solutions that we're partnering together with Dell on to bring onto the Dell AI factory with NVIDIA. So, yeah. you know, for a variety of different use cases, again, things like, you know, from digital assistants to code generation, you know, to digital twins, building out you know, specific solutions that for particular use cases, those ISVs and those, those new solutions and uh, software capabilities, leveraging NVIDIA AI Enterprise software with our NVIDIA NIMS and our, H our AI blueprints can now run on Dell AI Factory with NVIDIA and bring those to our customers, again, and get, get them up and running very qu quickly with each of those different use cases. You know, we're, we always run late because then NVIDIA Dell conversations are great. Love to do a deeper dive. Certainly we're following the AI Factory story. Mm -hmm. It's a huge concept that's happening. Right. Final question for you guys to break is, what's the next step in the partnership <laughs> with you guys? Is it is it continue to move the needle on AI Factory? Are there specific objectives on the roadmap and the relationships? Or can you share kind of what's next in the partnership? Well, 
that we can share some of it. Uh, uh, we're, we're, doing, we're doing a lot of work, <laughs> lot of work together, but it's about how do we continue to grow that AI factory? There's a lot more things we can do in terms of form factors, in terms of size, in terms of scale, but also in terms of the software and the solutions that are being built. NVIDIA has done an incredible job at innovating yeah. at your breakneck speed when it comes to the NIMS and the blueprints, and we've been matching them on what we're doing in the integrations yeah. with that and creating validated designs. So what you're going to see is more and more solutions that solve more and more customer problems built on the Dell AI factory with NVIDIA. And I think you'll see more of that as we move forward and as we meet in the future. I mean, you, NVIDIA's roadmap is pretty transparent. Right. You know, it's not like you're hiding it. You're even you're sharing it with everybody. Right. And yeah. so, so they're yeah. clearly, I mean, there's work that we're doing together yeah. up and down the yeah. stack. So yeah. we're, we're innovating, collaborating closely on obviously the, the GPU infrastructure with, yeah. with particularly, you know, with Blackwell and where we're headed next. I mean, and, and also continued innovation with Hopper. We, we just, you know, announced availability this week with the H200 NBL, which is our PCI form factor for, for enterprises deploying Hopper at scale. Um, and we're, we're continuing to work together with Spectrum X from a networking standpoint, continue yeah. to accelerate that and working not only with um, Spectrum switches, also our, our Bluefield 3 DPUs, yeah. delivering value together from compute to networking and then all the way up to software um, you know, with, with the work we're doing together with NIMS and Agent Blueprints. It's a great wave, or it's like Dave said, it's like the old processor days, the next one's coming and it gets better every time, but it still works together. Yeah. It's not like it's, it's open. It's like it's not like it, something replaces something. This is the beautiful thing. And that's the key: is making sure you know our, we help our customers be future proofed. So yeah. you know, as they continue to scale their deployments, as we continue to come out with new innovations, because it's moving so quickly. As we've accelerated our roadmap, whether it's new GPUs, whether it's new, you know networking capabilities, new software capabilities, new, you know st new storage and server capabilities or services. We're all working together to help make sure our customers are successful. And that builds into the Dell AI factory with NVIDIA, so people yeah. that build their factories now will be able to expand that yeah. when the new innovations come out together to be able to continue to grow that and drive the innovation in their organizations. Well, I love the, I love, I've always loved the AI factory. Dave knows I'm kind of love the name. And then I love the GDC, Michael Dell's in the front row. He gets the shout out, <laughs> waves, the whole Dell team's there. We kind of knew, saw that coming, but it really is a great positioning. Uh, it makes a lot of sense because this is the next level. I mean, the old era is closed, it's opening up a whole nother era, and it's just the beginning. So thanks for coming on and sharing. Thank you so much. It's great to be here. All right, AI great. Factory's real, it's happening, and it's happening very fast. And of course, the Cube Factory is doing its job, pumping out the content as fast as we can. And of course, we're going to be got reInvent coming up. We're going to be GTC next year. All the top events are happening here in the Cube. Thanks for watching.